Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about the perpendicular bisector theorem. It's a very important theorem. But before even we talk about the theorem itself, we have to understand what we mean by a perpendicular bisector. To, um, uh, to demonstrate that, I have drawn here three segments for you. I've labeled all of them AB just for convenience sake. Now, I can divide AB into uh, two congruent segments, or I can bisect them using various different things. For example, I can use uh, a, another segment like this right here. Let's call it segment PQ. I can say segment PQ bisects segment AB because segment PQ divides AB into two congruent segments. Okay. I can also bisect AB using a ray, for example. Here's, here's a ray. It has to kind of go to the midpoint, though, you know what I'm saying? So here's a ray. Let's call this R. Let's call this S. Now, R is the midpoint here because it divides AB into two congruent segments. So now I can say ray RS bisects segment AB, can I? Right? Now, I can also use another line to divide, I can use a line to divide AB into two, for example, like here. Now I can call this, I don't know, M, and let's call this C. So now I can say line MC bisects segment AB, correct? Because it divides segment AB into two congruent segments. So that's the meaning of bisect, correct? Now, if I happen to have a line or a segment or a ray, a line segment or ray, that bisects this segment AB and it is perpendicular to the segment, then this line would be called a perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular bisector divides the segment into two and it is perpendicular to the segment. So that's the definition of a perpendicular bisector. Now we are ready to talk about the perpendicular bisector theorem. Now, the perpendicular bisector theorem states, and I'm going to state it as a, a conditional statement here, and you will notice something. You will notice that the perpendicular bisector theorem is more about the points that are on the perpendicular bisector than about the perpendicular bisector itself. Let me say that again. You'll notice that the perpendicular bisector theorem is more about the points that are on the perpendicular bisector than the perpendicular bisector itself. So here it is. The theorem says if a point, see, if a point, okay, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector of what? Of a circle? No, of a segment, okay? If a point is on the perpendicular, because there are lots of points here, here's a point that's not on the perpendicular, here's another one, here's another one. But if it is on the perpendicular bisector like this, so if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then what? Okay, then it is equidistant, E-Q-U-I-D-I-S-T-A-N-T, -I -I which means equal distance. Then it is equidistant from, from what, you say? from the end points of the segment, okay? End points of the segment. Okay, that's, let me draw it out and you'll see how it become quite apparent, I think. So here's these two segments. Now, if point C is on the perpendicular bisector, the theorem says, then it is equidistant or equal distant from A and B. So AC would be congruent to BC. Now this applies to any point that is on the perpendicular bisector. I could pick that point, I could pick that point, or I could pick this point, and they would all be equidistant or equal distant from the end point. So that would be equal to this, this segment would be equal to this segment over here, and this segment would be equal to this segment over here, like this. So that segment, for example, would be congruent to that segment, and 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 similarly. Okay. So so as you can see, the theorem is more about the points that are on the perpendicular bisector than 
uh, the perpendicular bisector itself. And let's read this again, and uh, we shall try to prove this, inshallah. The theorem states, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, if it is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, okay, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, okay? Now, now the question for the proof of this theorem would, would look something like this. The given information would be the MC is the perpendicular bisector of the segment AB, and we would be asked to prove that AC is going to be congruent to BC. Now notice the proof is actually states that prove that AC equals BC because the theorem says they're equidistance, it's a measure of distance. So proving AC is congruent to BC is good, but we're technically asked to prove that AC, the measure of AC equals measure of BC. And that's what we shall try to do here, inshallah. When trying to prove things, of course, in a two-column proof like this, we have gotta have some kind of a strategy, right? So how am I gonna prove these two segments to be congruent? Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I think I could probably do it by looking at these two triangles over here. I'm going to try to prove this triangle over here to be congruent to this triangle over here, the triangle AMC, that's this triangle, to triangle BMC. I'm going to try to prove those two triangles congruent, then I could pull a CPCTC over here, right? Then those two would be congruent by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. They're congruent, right? So if I could prove those, now how am I going to prove those two triangles congruent? Well, staring right in front of me, and in front of you are these two right angles. So I'm thinking maybe I could use a hypotenuse leg to do this, right? Now, the hypotenuse leg requires you to have right triangles. Check, I got that. Then it also requires you to have congruent hypotenuse and one congruent leg. Well, we're trying to prove that the hypotenuse are congruent, right? We don't know they're congruent, well, so we can't really use hypotenuse leg here. The hypotenuse leg requires the hypotenuse and one set of legs to be congruent, so we're stuck with that. Okay, now what do we do? Well, I do have these two angles. I have these two segments to be congruent. Segment AM and BM are congruent because the perpendicular bisector. Now what else? Well, I have this side congruent to itself. M MC is congruent itself by reflexive property, last time I checked. So MC is congruent itself. Oh, now look, I have side, angle, side. So there we have it. So we can prove those two triangles congruent by side, angle, side, can't we? Yes. So once I do that, I can prove those two, uh, excuse me, uh, segments to be uh, congruent. Okay, let's do it then. So, start with the given. So, I'm going to say MC is perpendicular bisector of AB. So, that's given. Um, from this, you see, you can extrapolate some or extract some information. F the fact that it's perpendicular, I can say, what can I say? What can I say about the fact that it's perpendicular? Well, what I can say is angle AMC, right, and angle BMC are right uh, angles, okay? Or I can spell it out right angles like this. So you can say right angles, or you can say right angles like that, okay? So uh, we'll spell it out so there's no ambiguity, okay? Uh, right angles. Okay, so I can say this because of definition of perpendicular bisector, right? Okay, so now see, I can say angle AMC is congruent to angle BMC because all right angles are congruent. That's the right angle congruence theorem. Okay, there's a theorem, right? Right angle congruence theorem. So now I got that. I got the angle. I got to get the sides in there, right? Okay, let's get the sides, okay? I'm going to say 4 AM is congruent to BM. Segment AM is congruent to segment BM because 
definition of perpendicular bisector. There we have it. And finally, and I'm anticipating, MC is going to be congruent to MC. That's because of reflexive property, darn it, reflexive property of congruence for segments. Okay, got that. Now I have my side angle side, right? So I can do my side angle side. Okay, so I can say true triangle. Come on now, be good colors now. So I'm going to say number six, triangle AMC is going to be congruent to triangle BMC because of side angle side. There we have it. And then I can say, and then I, you know what I'm going to say now. AC is congruent to BC, and that is because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And number eight, AC equals BC because I said so, darn it. No, because of definition of congruence. Ta-da. Or QED. Ta-da, ta-da. All right. So there we have it. So we have proven the perpendicular bisector theorem. The perpendicular bisector theorem says, again, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. Inshallah, we'll reuse it again, and we next time we shall talk about the converse of this theorem. Until then, as-salatu wa salam wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. As-salamu alaykum.